Welcome to the fifth Sunday of Easter. Welcome to our long-term members and attenders. Welcome to those who are new to us, who just landed on this page because someone sent you a link. Welcome to those who used to worship here, but have now moved away. Welcome to you who have dressed up for this service, and also to you who are worship, wor worshiping in your pajamas. <laughs> Welcome to any and all of you. Please know we are glad you're here, and we invite you to contact us and let us know who you are and how we might include you in our circle of faith. Our announcements this morning, remember we have drive-by conversation and blessings each Thursday from 11.30 until 1 o'clock in the afternoon. The office hours have now changed to Tuesday and Thursdays from 9 o'clock until 3.30. And for those of you who haven't sent us a photo yet, please consider sending one with you in your mask. We look forward to seeing you in your favorite mask. Please continue with your ties and with your offerings. You can send them in or stop by. Please let us know if there are any announcements that you'd like us to make. And for our joys and concerns today, happy Mother's Day to all of you who are out there. We are so thankful for our moms. We're also mindful that some are experiencing the loss of their mom this year. You are all in our hearts. We are grateful that as far as we know, no one here has had the coronavirus, but we remember all who are affected and we remember all those that are providing health care. We are praying for Peggy Johnson, who's having eye surgery on Tuesday the 12th at Duke, and we continue to pray for Lewis Fowler, who's having concerns with his health. Join me now in our morning prayer. Dear Lord, prayer is not our last resort, but it is our first resort. We know you are the author and perfecter of our faith, and we know from whence our health comes, it comes from you. Please continue to watch over us. Be with those that are anxious and afraid. Be with those who need care and be with those who give care. We are all in this as a community. Amen. Today we give thanks to God for the gift of mothers and the mother-like nurture that many people show to others in their lives. Isaiah wrote that God is a mother to us, comforting and carrying us in her arms. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. Isaiah 66, 13. Loving God, thank, thank you, you for, for your, your tender, tender care. care. David wrote that in God's presence, he was quiet and at peace, trusting his mother God like a child safe in loving arms. But I have stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. Psalm 131, verse 2. Loving God, thank you for your tender care. Jesus spoke of himself as a mother, longing to wrap his arms around us, like a mother hen gathers her chicks and under her wings. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. Matthew 23, 37. Loving Lord, thank you for your tender care. Thank you for the gift of those who have graciously loved us and in doing so, have shown us your love. Amen.
Today's scripture reading is Psalm 131. O oh Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. But I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. My soul is like the weaned child that is with me. O oh Israel, hope in the Lord from this time on and forevermore. I was in my 20s when I made my first solo journey from Iowa to North Carolina. I came to North Carolina to visit my uncle Emmanuel, who was teaching Bible, Old Testament in particular, at Lenore Ryan College. Soon after I arrived, he invited me to join him at, in his intro to Bible class as a guest, and I said, sure. So my Uncle Emmanuel began his lecture in this way. He said, in a moment, I'm going to give you one word, and I want you to pay attention to what picture or image comes to your mind when I offer that word. So I want all of you in radio land to um, imagine with me, okay? Uncle Emmanuel took a pause, and then he said, and the word is God. So, what picture came to your mind? Uncle Emmanuel then asked each student to share, and almost everyone described God, the first picture that came to their mind, described it as an old man with a long white beard sitting on clouds. <laughs> kind of a spiritual Dumbledore or Gandalf kind of character, right? And yep, that too was my image, except I didn't have any clouds. Now, there is something beautiful about seeing God as a kind and wise father or grandfather. In fact, I grew up with all my prayers starting off, Dear Heavenly Father. And, you know, because my earthly father was really a gentle soul, it was so easy for me to make the connection to a Heavenly Father who loved me unconditionally. It really is a wonderful image. Of course, as my Uncle Emmanuel pointed out, the image of beloved Abba or Daddy or Father really is only one of many names and many ways we can relate to God. In fact, depending on who is doing the counting, there is somewhere between 72 and 975 different names or metaphors for the divine in the Bible. And I think that is really exciting because I am learning that when I explore a myriad of names and images and metaphors, I can more readily take in the bigness of our God. It also influences the way that I pray because, you know, some days I just need to talk to God as mama. And some days... I want to pray to Jesus as my brother or my friend. And often, when I am in need of help, it's to the mighty Savior to whom I call. Then there are instances when we're asked to pray for a particular person or situation, but we have no words, right? And so then we can simply hold that person or that situation in the loving light of God. Can't you just imagine that? Or maybe you can picture that person being carried by the Good Shepherd. In other words, exploring the many names of God is an invitation to really deepen and expand our relationship with God. 
So let me offer just a few of the images that are found in Scripture. As Nancy read, some of the feminine, feminine references to God include a mother who comforts her children, a hen seeking to protect her chicks, then there's a mother bear, and there's the mother eagle, and there's God as a woman in labor, or another image is a woman seeking her lost coin. Then we also have some more metaphorical references, such as God as light, fire, wind, rock, shield, fortress, balm of Gilead, lily of the valley, lover, vine, living water, morning star, bridegroom, bread of life. And I could go on. But then there are some, um, I guess what you would call more specific names for God, like Creator, or Jehovah, El Shaddai, Lord, Anointed One, Savior, Friend, Messiah, Rabbi. And my all-time favorite from the book of Exodus, I am who I am. One of my mentors is a woman named Joyce Rupp, and she's written a day book entitled Fragments of Your Ancient Name. And in this day book, she offers 365 different expressions for God. Joyce writes this, when I quickly relearn, what I quickly relearned as I started writing these reflections is that when we name, we connect. A personal dimension evolves. Naming allows for relationship. Each designation or title I held in my heart drew me into relationship with God rather than keeping me outside as an objective observer. When we name anyone or anything, there's the possibility of coming closer. I love that. And it's true. Let me give you an example. The other day, I was out walking with my neighbor, and I said to her, you know, I've noticed your husband recently has really been reaching out to different people in the neighborhood, different like different than before. And she said, yeah, my husband has started learning the neighbor's names, and that helps him feel like he can engage. And it's so true. Names are important. So when it comes to the divine, let's be expansive and adventurous, because each name for the holy is just a glimpse into the mysterious one who has captured our hearts. On this Mother's Day, I would invite us to experiment a bit. Today, when you go home, well, you are home. <laughs> Today, as you are at home, might we pray to God as our mother, or maybe to Sophia, Lady Wisdom, or maybe you might want to pray to God who could carry you on eagle's wings. And then each day of the week in your prayers, maybe try on a different name or a new image. Experiment with your times of prayer. Let's see what it's like to be expansive as we engage with the one who loves us beyond all of our imaginings. Amen.
As you go into your week, may you go in open and curious as to how God might show up in your life. And as you go into this week, may you also be aware of God's tender and sweet love. Amen.